Hi everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California. And today I'm gonna to show you how I propagate sheep. And I've got a secret that I've been using that I am finally gonna to release to you. Actually, I wanted to try it out to make sure it was great because I was thinking of doing it a different way and it was too expensive. This way it's so cheap. I love propagating. You know that and you can propagate so many plants, whether it's flowers, your vegetables, I do a lot of my brassicas that way. This one is a purple curly kale. This is growing fantastic. This is a sun gold. I'm hoping to get this rooted really good so I can plant it out next spring. I'll probably keep it kind of like in my little greenhouse. But let me show you how easy this is. These are some cuttings I did today and some of them are very important to me. This skimpy little thing is really important to me. This is a dazzling blue kale. My plant is dying away but it still has some good growth. So what I'm gonna do is propagate that. And then I've got some regular tree colored here. I've got an RNG special. This is just a hybrid that grows in our yard and it just grows so good. And then I've got a purple tree colored. You know what, let's do the purple tree colored right now. So you can see how easy it is to do. Now, I love using party cups. Yes, I use a lot of other things. You know I use coffee cups and paper cups. And I also use milk cartons, but here's the thing. The milk cartons break down before the plant is ready. And that doesn't work. You'll get black, moldy, and it's not gonna hurt anything. But the problem is you may wanna leave this in for months, especially over winter until spring comes and you wanna plant it out. Or maybe you just wanna plant it and forget it until you're ready for it. Well, these will last pretty much the whole time that you're until this plant is ready to go into the ground or in a flower pot but the milk cartons won't so keep that in mind but plastic will if you've got plastic milk cartons then absolutely but see i've got all these labeled and this is what i love you can label them this way or you can just stick you know a plant stake in there or even close pin what you're growing in there but this way you'll remember and let's see i've got a purple tree color so let's take the purple tree color and this is the fun part. This is, you're, we're getting there. First of all, you don't want all these leaves because you want the plant to generate roots. So you want less leaves on top. Now, if there, and, and these, by the way, I was gonna compost it. I'm gonna take that in and make a green drink. Now, here's a few things you may or may not know. When you cut off the leaves, you have to leave something. Though I have done just sticks, and you can do it just with a stick. But I like to leave a little bit. If your leaves are really big, you could cut the leaf in half and just leave a little bit of green growth. This I'll put in there. And now you've got this. Now I could theoretically make two out of it here, but I think I'm just gonna go with the one. I'm gonna trim the bottom off so it's got a you know, good connection with the soil. But here's the thing, some people dry it. They say, oh, you want it dry because the roots are gonna come out of the side. I don't wait, I've never had a problem. So if you want to wait till this is dry, you can wait. Now, there's two ways of doing this. You can put in the bottom my special stuff. That's totally up to you. I actually usually don't, but you know what? For fun, let's do it here. Now, I'm gonna put potting soil. Now, get a good potting soil for that because some of the potting soil this year has not been that good. There's been some persistent herbicides in there, and what happens is your cuttings won't grow. They could die back. A lot of the plants I planted with them didn't grow. So I'm gonna just say this. I have nothing to do with miracle Grow. Some people like it, some people don't. I've never had a problem with them, which means they must be testing their soil, their bags, and some of the cheaper ones, I don't think they're testing. And literally, you, the seeds would start to grow and die right away. Tomatoes would die right away. So I am going to, for now on, stick with name brands that I know. The other thing you can do, which I do all the time, is if you're growing in totes or grow bags or buckets, whatever way you're growing, or even in the ground, you can go around and get that soil. If your totes are all broke down, use that soil. I do, it's fantastic. Now, here you're gonna see, I don't even put that much soil in. It's about that much soil. But we're gonna get this all the way in. You wanna make sure a good portion of your stem is in soil, all right? So I just push it in and I use 
I use a paintbrush, but you can use anything you want, then you push it in. Now, if you decide you want more soil, see how loose it is? I'll show you what to do. This is the fun part. So now I'm going to put in some more soil. You want to have really good contacts. You want to push it in. You have to make sure that the stem is getting good contact, that stalk, with the soil. But here's the fun part. This. This is where I put this on top. Now you in Britain, in the UK, say, ah, oh, we know what that is. It's grit. We use grit for everything. They do. I watch a lot of people in the UK. I watch Gardener's World. I love Gardener's World. And everybody uses grit. So I went to look up what grit is. Now, grit is different here in the United States than what it is in the UK. Grit in the UK is crushed rocks. Here, people think grit is what they feed to their birds. That's another way of grit. And it is crushed rocks. And if you get grit that they, people feed to their birds, whether it's chickens or parrots or whatever, a lot of times that have shells, which is perfectly fine. But that is about $15 plus for 25 pounds. This is five for 25 pounds. This is kitty litter. The cheapest kitty litter you can get. I get mine from Walmart. I'm sure you can get it from Target. Chewy's got it, it's a little bit more, but Walmart's got it for $5, 25 pounds. And you know what I love about it? It holds water. All these little pellets in there hold water. It's not pellets, this is crushed clay. So it probably comes from a factory that's working with clay pottery, I don't know. And then they don't have dust, it's not dusty, it's just a certain size, and it has been working fantastic. Now all you have to do is water it and that grit, which is not grit here, here I'm using kitty litter, really holds it taut and it holds the water in. I'm going to be using it for a lot of different things. Now when I water it's going to go through, but look at this. It holds the water in, it's been making my plants grow really, really good. But like I said, you can put it on the bottom or not. Generally. I'll show you again. I'll do another one. Let's do my RG special. My three-way cutting. These grow beautiful. I think it's a cross between collard, dinosaur kale, and I was thinking dazzling blue kale because it gets purple sometimes. I'm going to take most of it off. I grow a lot of this now in the yard. I absolutely love it. It doesn't need all these leaves. And they've been kind of eaten by bugs, so I'm not going to eat that today. But look at that. I don't need it that long, so I'm going to cut it down a little bit. But it has just been so easy to grow. And then I've got my cup that says the RG Special. And again, just like I did it, you saw, I'm going to just use the soil. I actually prefer to use just soil. I know some people like to put different things on the bottom, but I just put soil in. I'm telling you this takes minutes. And I'll tell you another secret that I have found out that works for me and it might work for you. I actually prep these cups now before I even have anything to plant in them. This is why I can get things done better. The thing is when the cup is already prepped and there's soil and it's, I don't need to put the kitty litter in yet. I do that afterwards. But when the soil is in there, all I have to do is if, if a plant broke, I just take the stem and stick it in there. That's why I'm getting more things done. And then, of course, I go back and I just load it uh, with the kitty litter, which is just simple clay. That's all it is, is clay. Now, you don't want anything expensive. You want the cheapest kitty litter because it will tell you no fragrance, nothing's been added to it. It's 100% crushed clay is what it is. It'll just say clay. And that's it. Now, look at this. It's done, and I could get this whole table done, one, two, three, that quick. Isn't that cool? I mean, I am just so crazy about it. If you were going to leave these outside, I'd make a little hood. This is out of a tote lid, and you can make them where they fit the cup. This is another purple uh, tree colored in here. The reason is you'll have cabbage moths flying around, and they have done this. They'll lay their eggs on here, and they'll demolish it, and they'll have just the stick and then I have to pick them all off. But the thing I'm doing right now is I'm putting them in my tote 
with the dome that I make. You can go back and watch that video, how I make these tops for free. I mean, it's just from the tote lid with a little tool and then nothing gets in there. I can leave them in there now all winter if I want and come spring, I can find a place to plant it. So all you need are cups. And if you're having a party, we got the holidays coming. Don't let them throw their plastic cups away. It doesn't matter what size it is. Keep those cups, make drainage holes. You have to have drainage holes and you'll be good to go. So tell them after your party, put all the plastic cups in that bag because I am going to plant my garden in it. So I hope I've given you some ideas and don't forget, the easiest thing is with a hot soldering iron to make your holes. I use it for everything. And of course, I still periodically use the coffee cups with the tool. Same thing, you can lift it up. You can see the roots growing on this tomato cutting I did. And I use my coffee cups a lot of times because they look pretty and they look nice on the windowsill. But when I'm doing it for outside, I prefer cups. And if you are gonna make these tops, you can make them out of milk cartons too. So if you've got any, any cardboard or whatever, this, this will work perfect for that. I didn't cover it with tool just to show you how easy it is to cut it up in strips and staple it up with a stapler. So if you're having problems with any cuttings or if you wanna start doing propagating from cuttings, think about using kitty litter. 25 pounds for $5 the cheapest and they deliver it to the house. I don't even have to go pick it up. That's a win-win all the way around. So once I have my cuttings in the cups, as you can see here, I like keeping them in a tote that has a little soil. The soil keeps it very natural and the temperature really perfect for them. And then once it overruns, if it drips out, it just drips out down there. But I do keep a layer of soil, just about an inch, on the bottom and then all my cups go in here and the plants work out so perfect in here. They all seem to root. I've got potato mint, I've got tomatoes, I've got pepinos, all kinds of different brassicas growing. And then the other thing I do as I put a top on it and the top keeps out the cabbage moth butterfly that comes in here to lay her eggs. They stay clean, they stay healthy and when they're ready to go, you simply just open it up, take out your cutting, and plant it wherever you want. With that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. And boy, do we eat tree color. Mmm. That is really good. And if you're propagating from your own garden and you want a nice straight tree color, try to pick ones that are straight. But you can grow any of them, even if they bush out. Sometimes the bushier ones are even nicer. Let me make this a little short.